Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to model time series data. More specifically, we are going to use Python programming language to create a simple linear regression algorithm that is able to model Netflix stock prices. We are going to use a Netflix stock dataset that is available in Cargo repository. You can download it because it's a public dataset which is free to use. And uh, this dataset has seven columns. The first column is the date, the opening price of the stock, the highest price of the stock, the lowest price, the closing price, the adjusted closing price, as well as the volume of the stock are traded. Now, to start with, we need to import the requisite libraries. And in this case, if you are uh, writing live codes, you can pause the video, write the codes, and then play the video. I'm going to explain the codes here. So we start by importing uh, the requisite libraries. And the first one is known as NumPy. NumPy is used to convert data into a multi-dimensional array that our linear regression algorithm can be able to understand. Then we import PADAS. PADAS is used to load data into uh, Python, and it is also used to perform data manipulation activities, such as uh, determining whether or not they are null values and also treating those null values. Then uh, we use Smartplotlib to uh, visualize our data set. We did an entire video on how to pre-process data and uh, visualize it and I have uh, left the link to that video in the description below and I have as well attached the video here so that you can be able to watch it. After that, you can uh, run the cell. To run the cell, remember we press shift enter. Then you load the, the data set, load the data set. You start by creating a data frame. A data frame uh, from pandas, then you call the object of pandas which we named pd here and the method known as read underscore csv inside it you pass the name of the csv file in this case mine is known as nflx underscore stop dot csv and remember this csv file must be saved in the same folder where you have your uh, notebook so you can run it to and this line here prints the first 10 rows of our csv you can run it view the first 10 rows and you can be able to see it you can even compare this against what you have in your csv let us now print out the shape so that you can understand how many rows and how many columns do we have. We have 1,007 rows against seven columns. Let us now visualize it so that we can understand it in a more detailed manner. And to visualize it, we use uh, matplotlib. Remember here when we're importing matplotlib, we create an object of matplotlib that we call plt. So you come here and say plt.figure to define the figure size, define the title, define the label of the x-axis, define the label of the y-axis, and then what exactly are we plotting? We are plotting the data that is found in the data frame. But now we don't want to plot the entire data set. We are interested more in one column, which is the closing price. That is the one that we want to model. So you come here and pass this argument known as close, and then you use plt.show display visualization. And you can be able to see that this is a very clear visualization. We have the days on the x-axis. We have the closing price on the y-axis. We have the title there. And you have our, uh, our curve showing how the stock has been performing over time. And uh, already this curve can give us a clear depiction of how our data set looks like. And you can be able to make a lot of sense uh, from it. Then you can print the first 20 rows of the closing price because that is the one that we're interested in using this particular code that we have over here. And uh, you can see the first 20 rows. Remember, we use the DF stats for data frame. Then we use the head method to print the first 20 rows, the first rows rather. Then in the parentheses, we pass the number of rows that we want. In this case, I have past 20. You can change this one to 10. And it will print for you the first 10 rows. If you don't pass any number in the parentheses, then it prints for you the first five rows. By default, it prints for you the first half. So the purpose of our printing this is to basically have a feel and a look of how the closing price looks like. And then after that, we go ahead uh, and now create what we are calling the future days. We want to predict the last 400 days of our data set. So what we are going to do is that we are going to truncate our data set. The last 200 days, we remove them, and we try and use our linear regression algorithm to predict them. So to do that, we first create the future days, and then we create a data frame that we are calling prediction, and we pass the closing price so that we can truncate the closing price, and we shift them to what we are calling the future days. And then you can run that particular cell by pressing shift enter. After that, uh, you create a feature data set as well as the target data set. 
using the truncated uh, feature list or what we call the prediction. And the purpose of this is basically have a data set that we can compare against because our data set has 1,007 uh, entries. So you have removed 200 days. So these 200 days, you're going to compare what was found in the data set or the original ground truth against what the algorithm is doing predict. So you can run that particular cell. And once you run it, you can be able to see that giving us some warning, telling us that the future versions of PADAS, we need to check how we pass certain arguments. So that is important, especially for developers, so that you can understand how uh, these um, syntax is changing over time. After that, we now import or we now create our linear regression algorithm. So to create our linear regression algorithm, we need to import it from scikit-learn library. Scikit-learn library contains classical machine learning libraries, such as uh, linear regression, logistic regression, we have naive bias, support vector machine, decision tree, random forest, and many others. It also contains several other important tools, such as the train and test split library, sub library, which helps us to uh, split our data set into a training set and a test set. So you run the cell to import the requisite uh, libraries. Then after that, take your data set and now split it into a training set and a test set. In this case, I have set my test size at 0 0.25, 0 0.25. It means that I'm going to use 75% for training and 25% for testing. Then after you have done that, go ahead and fit your linear regression model. This is what uh, many people would call passing the data to the linear regression model or training the linear regression model. We use the dot fit method to train a linear regression model. And we pass inside the arguments the x train and the y train. One might be wondering what is this x train and the y train? Let's go back to our visualization here. In our visualization, we have days in the x axis and we have the closing price in the uh, y axis. So when you talk about the x train, those are the days, where the y train, that is the closing price for the corresponding day. And remember, we are using 75% of the data to train. The other 25% is reserved. And out of uh, the 100% that we had initially, we had truncated 200 entries. So out of the 807 that we made, 75% for training, 25% for testing. Then you can run that particular uh, linear regression algorithm. algorithm. This is just a simple data set and we have not done so many parameters of our linear regression. It is going to take a very short period of time to train. It's actually going to take seconds. After that, take the feature data set that we created and convert it into a NumPy array that our linear regression algorithm that we have seen here can be able to understand and use to predict. So this is the NumPy array that the data is going to be converted into. And then after that, pass that array into our linear regression model that we have trained here. Remember, the regression model that we have trained, we have called it LR, LR, right? So you come here and now create a prediction variable and inside the prediction variable, what do you pass? You pass LR.predict and uh, inside the parentheses, you put the X future, which basically contains the array of the 20 days that you want to predict. Then you can print uh, the prediction by using the method print inside the parentheses you pass lr underscore uh, prediction and then once you run it you're going to see the prediction in this case it is in the form of an array therefore it's very difficult to interpret and even make a lot of sense out of it and that is where the next step comes in which is visualization how about we put it in a visual format so that we can be able to understand it and interpret it in a much better way so in this visual format what we are going to do is that we first define uh, we take this LR prediction and put it as a single variable known as predictions. And then we define uh, the size of our plot. We also define the title. We define the uh, X label. We define the Y label. At the same time, we want to plot the closing price. So from the data frame, we take the closing price of the 807 days. After that, we plot uh, the uh, validation uh, prediction, or that is what has been predicted, as well as we brought the legend for us to be able to understand uh, what our model has been able to perform. Then we can use the plt.show to display our visual output. 
and this is how our visual output looks like you can see we have the days we have the uh, closing price in uh, united states dollars then we have this uh curve in blue color what the curve represents is uh the 807 days that were untouched and uh, it is from these 807 days that our linear regression algorithm has tried to get a pattern from and try to extend that pattern to the next 200 uh, days and uh, from this we can be able to see that we have the purple one which is known as the print this is the pattern that our linear regression algorithm has tried to extend and then we have the red one and this red one is the basically represents the original ground truth remember we had 1007 entries we truncated 200 or we removed 200 now the purple one shows how the linear regression has been able to extend the 200 the red one shows the original or what we call the ground truth and what can we learn from this or what can we interpret this to be from the beginning here you can see that the linear regression algorithm was almost a hundred percent accurate but as it is it moved along and uh, from this point all the way towards the end its predictions went way higher than the ground truth this is as a result uh, of the fact that we just used a base linear regression model we have not done any pre-processing to it we have not been able to set any parameters to it we have not even defined how well our linear regression model is able to get the line of best fit and even if it has to go through a uh, training we did not move it through several iterations of training we just trained it using a batch of data and uh, that could have affected how it is performing here and therefore as a data scientist you need now to improve on this by basically uh, setting several hyperparameters and parameters for your linear regression model so that it is able to perform way better than this one has performed but thank you so much for watching this video please subscribe to the channel subscribe to the channel click on the notification bell so that you can be notified every time we release a new video as well as like our videos and if you have any comments share them in the comment section below